Can India catch up with China when it comes to trade with Africa? Right now, India's Prime Minister is in Mozambique, the first Indian leader to visit in 30 years. He's also going to South Africa, Tanzania and Kenya. Here's why. Africa is rich in natural resources. The majority of its exports to China and India are raw materials. It is also a large and lucrative market for exporters from around the world. Well, China is the dominant trade partner for the continent right now. It's invested more than $250 billion since 2006. And just and last year, just last year, its trade with Africa topped $200 billion. But now India wants a bigger piece of the pie. Its trade with the continent has grown every year over the past decade and exceeded $70 billion last year. And at a summit last year, Prime Minister Modi promised $10 billion in trade concessions and thousands of scholarships for African students. Well, joining me now from Johannesburg is Ian Cruikshank. He's the chief economist at the South African Institute of Race Relations. Uh, Mr. Cruikshank, thank you very much for joining us on Money Talks. Uh, let's just begin Good with this with trip by Prime Minister Modi. Is this more than just a gesture, an historic trip? Are there going to be actual substantive big economic and financial deals coming out of this? In the future, yes. Immediately, I think that's unlikely. After all, in four days, one can't really do too much of, of tying up, uh, creating and tying up new trade uh, agreements. But I think it is a, a, a signal to the future. After all, China is the most important e export destination for large parts of Africa, and certainly particularly for South Africa, the biggest economy in the country, in, 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 the, in the continent. And I think that what India wants to do is solidify the, the connections that they have with the, the producers of resources which they don't have and need, and I think to try and offering things, uh, off, offering a trade agreements will be a way of, uh, of demonstrating their willingness to increase trade. Okay, China is our biggest trading partner. I think let's India talk about those resources. Like a bigger slice of that. Let's talk about those resources for yes. a moment. Is China and India in a race for the same resources? Well, I don't know if it's a race, but yes, they're just looking at the amount of development capital that China has put in and that India has started to put in. I'm quite sure that that is it. After all, uh, Africa is the last remaining source of basic industrial and energy uh, commodities, and I think that that's what they want to uh, slice off, and they will probably do what they can to improve relations uh, to get more of that. The Chinese certainly have a big footprint in Africa, but they have been criticized at times for... Uh, their human rights record and perhaps being neo-imperialist, as some would put it. Do you think India has a different approach and could it be more attractive to the Africans? Uh, it, that's possible. I think they will have learned from the experience of, of uh, Africans dealing with China. Uh, Chinese seem to come in here with capital, uh, definitely, and, uh, and with techniques, and with their own, uh, their own management and their own workers. It's not a partnership agreement. It's to take it, take what they can, and then leave with that product. I think India has come with a more uh, private, par private to public partnership idea, and that will suit the Africans, I think, to a far greater extent. In these trade negotiations between these very powerful up-and-coming economies, do you see Africa at a disadvantage or are they holding their own at the negotiating table? I would say it's a question of capital. They're disadvantaged in that case at the moment, and it's likely to take some time before they can recover that situation and be taken as equal partners in trade agreements. I think that will take some time, but it is the aim of where they want to go. In Crookshanks, the chief economist at the South African Institute of Race Relations, thank you very much for your analysis on Money Talks.